please rise. Welcome, class of 2013, to our senior last assembly. Look around and re realize where you are in this moment. 
just a short time away from one of the most important moments of our young lives, and we are lucky enough to be able to spend this time united as the class of 2013. It's hard to believe that after three years of sitting in the bleachers or with the band, that it's finally our turn to be the ones that the whole school is watching. Each one of us has had a unique journey through DY, but the fact remains that no matter how different our journeys and DY experiences were, we are all here right now in the same place together. Savor these moments and reflect on all the memories that have brought us here to our final display in front of the DY community. No matter what type of student you were in these short four years, each one of you deserves the spot you're sitting in right now. Congratulations to you all, and let the last day of our time as a Dolphin commence. And now I introduce to you your class secretary, Rebecca Feeney, to read our class history. We began our days here at DY as mere freshmen, overwhelmed by the daunting size of our new school, excited by the collection of Dennis and Yarmouth students that promised new friendships and frightened by the dreaded 84 minute blocks that were nearly double the length we were used to in middle school. But as we acclimated to each other and familiarized ourselves with our new surroundings, teachers, and schedules, those 84 minute blocks were no longer long enough to suit our growing ambitions. Over 241,000 minutes later, we have finally heard the surreal sound of our last bell. Standing here today, it is hard to believe how quickly all that time has passed and how insignificant our initial freshman fears were in the face of all the greatness we would accomplish. We utilized each block, day, week, month, and year to advance our class and leave behind a legacy that will stand long after the sound of the final bell dissipates. As freshmen, we embraced challenges and helped facilitate a successful battle of the bands with the sophomore officers. With our own ascendance to sophomore status, we spearheaded Battle of the Bands on our own and made it a completely triumphant endeavor. We even tried a new idea to raise school spirit and funding for our class by selling DY wristbands. For a while, nearly everywhere you turned, you could see the hands of teachers and classmates alike resonating unity with those matching lime green, Livestrong style bracelets. In keeping with our innovative spirit, we were also the first and last class to attempt a powder puff game. And for those of us who took part in that event, its distinct resemblance to tackle football and the resulting bruises that surfaced the next day were enough to remind us all why we would not be doing that again. However, those same bruises brought us together as we realized that in the face of that violent game, we could take on any encounter with the grace that is now so commonly associated with our class. That same grace helped us host a memorable talent show and gave us the power to switch prom venues in our junior year with the trust we gained from our teachers and administration. The CV was quickly transformed into an underwater paradise as the addition of glittery gowns and classic finger foods made everything resonate with a beautiful, beyond the sea atmosphere. Our senior prom reflected the same elegance as our festive carnival was a smash hit, something none of us will soon forget. Amidst the fundraisers and activities, a variety of sporting events and championships defined our class as well. The New England Cross Country Champion and members of the Super Bowl fo winning football team have helped to make our high school class something to truly celebrate. More recently, our boys basketball team won the ACL for the first time, and marching band, color guard, and winter percussion dominated the competition field, providing further evidence of the multifaceted talent in our class. But as a whole, we are so much more than the games we've won or the events we've held together. We are defined instead by our collective character and by the example we have become for others. Our legacy lies in the way our actions have affected those around us, not in the actions themselves. We are the class for which teachers actually volunteered as prom chaperones. We are the class that is constantly described as caring and responsible. We are even the class, as Mr. BSP has said many times, that made band cool. We have evolved over the course of these past four years at DY to be the class with class, defined by the very essence of the word. And so, our legacy endures as an example of behavior for years to come, even after our final 84-minute block bell has rung. Uh, I would now like to introduce the musical selection performed by Alyssa Medeiros, who will be singing 93 Million Miles by Jason Mraz.
Can I? class of 2013. We are here to present the senior class superlatives. So with further, no further ado, let's start. Um, so with most likely to su succeed, Rebecca Feeney. Most likely to succeed, Brian Beatty. Best Artist, Michelle Lee. Best Artist, Brian Beatty. With Did Most for the Class, Emma Harney.
did most for the class, Peter Julian. Most athletic, Jordan O'Day. Most athletic, Spencer McCaffrey. Best dancer, Lillian Cesard. Best dancer, Jamari Hall. Most musical, Allison Coulette. Most musical, Peter Julian. Drama queen, Julia Pecoraro. Drama king, Khalil Mendes. Most theatrical, Linnea Soddenberg. Most theatrical, Dakota Dickerson. <laughs> Class couple, Alyssa Preston and Chad Simmons. Best co-ed friends, Becca Tarrany and Tim Foley. <laughs> Female best friends, Jamie, Ludie, and Lillian. Best friends, Joe Coughlin and Chad Simmons. <laughs> Did most for others, Alyssa Medeiros. Did most for others, Eric Jornet. One more round of applause for these. I'd now like to introduce our class senior class treasurer, Jessica Linnell. Good morning, class of 2013. As class, tre as class treasurer, today it is my pleasure to introduce the gift that our class will be giving back to the school, which has given all of us so much over the last four years. We've been accumulating our class funds since the beginning of our freshman year, and now that all of our expenses have been paid for, and after all the hard work that went into our many fundraisers, we're fortunate enough to be able to provide DY with a very beneficial offering this year. Everyone in this class has experienced the excitement of attending events at DY, ranging from the big Friday night football games and other sporting events, to concerts and theater productions, to Relay for Life and Blood Drives. There is so much constantly happening at DY. So this year, our class gift is a donation towards the 10 foot electronic sign that will be installed in front of the school by next fall to help keep our students and community aware of all the fun events happening at DY. Tool to encourage the Dennis 
this Yarmouth community to support our school by attending these events and every time they drive down Station Ave to be reminded of how remarkable this high school really is. And now I'd like to introduce Lee Drown to introduce our foreign exchange students. The DY community can boast about a lot of things, but one truly special occurrence at DY involves our foreign exchange program. Each year, out of an estimated 132,183 high schools in the United States, students from across the globe travel to our high school to become part of our DY family. Just think, the foreign exchange students leave their families, friends, their familiar routines, and cultures for a year just to become a dolphin. Throughout my time at DY, I have constantly heard comments of shock and admiration at how a young adult, just our age, could leave everything they had known and immerse themselves in an unknown country without the help of anyone they knew. It takes a truly courageous person to make this journey, and this year, our school was lucky enough to be granted three of these brave students from diverse areas of the world. Daya Weber Trebesh from Germany, Christian Tapia from Ecuador, and Matt Barr from Australia, have not simply participated in Exchange to DY, but have rather delved into all aspects of our high school. From participating in athletics, to attending football games and dances, and intriguing all of our students with your worldly knowledge, you all have made such a positive impact on DY. It is students like yourselves that remind us seniors, who often believe we have already seen everything there is to see, that we still have so much more to learn about the world around us. On behalf of the class of 2013, we cannot thank you enough for joining this diverse, eclectic, and exciting group that is DY. Your spirit of adventure is truly inspiring, and all of you add an element to DY that makes us the powerful school we are today. As you all prepare to travel back to your homes, either this year or the following, we sincerely hope that a piece of your heart will always lie in Cape Cod and that you know you will forever be a DY Dolphin. And now I'd like to introduce Daya. Uh, give her speech. Just a year ago, I got an email with the name of a school I never heard of. I imagined how my life would be here. I imagined how the people would greet me, laugh with me, talk to me. My biggest question was, would I find friends? I'm happy to answer the question with no, because I didn't find friends, they found me. Here at DY, it is so easy to get involved with sports and club. Even before school started, I played volleyball every day. I wasn't good at all, but it was with that team, it was impossible to not improve. The first thing I learned here was school spirit. I never saw a school with a spirit like ours. It made me feel to be a part of it, not just a foreign exchange student. Even the first day, when I couldn't find my classes, students were helping me to find my way. After a month of school, I think I already knew more people than at my old school. I would have to lie if I say there was no time I didn't want to go home. But the thought of missing the rest of this year with you guys let me forget my homesickness. Every day, there was something new to learn. I wish I could come back next year. I wish I could play volleyball again, run faster in winter track, improve my sailing skills, and be more creative in the musical. One year is never enough time to do everything. But that's the reason why this was so special for me. Because this is a once in a lifetime experience, and I won't come back next year. But I will appreciate everything even more when I am back in Germany. And I will never forget my first day and my last day and every day between them. And now I'd like to introduce Matt. Uh, forgive me if I stumble. I'm, I'm still shy and unsure about the language. Um, for those that haven't met me, my name is Matthew Barr. I'm an exchange student through Rotary International from Australia. 
Um, I'm an ambassador for Rotary, which means I uphold the five Rotary, a uh, lot of Rotary ideals, and my key five are this. I can't drink, I can't drive, I can't do drugs, I can't uh, disfigurement, which means I can't get a tattoo or a piercing, and I can't date. And I'm proud to say I've upheld all of them. Isn't that right, Manon? Um, if I, I've been here four months, apparently, but it doesn't feel like that. Um, life is filled with roads and paths. As we go through life, we watch as one after another slam shut in front of us. Um, when my nana passed away, I took a total 180 on my life. I changed my view on religion, I changed my view on myself, and I changed my view on student exchange. I applied and I got here. Um, I somehow arrived at Sydney Airport, ticket in hand, and I turned away from my family for the last time. Well, maybe not for the entirely last time, but it was the last time I'd see them in a year. I'd have to place my trust in strangers I hadn't met. My host family, my host Rotary Club, and DY, the school. I'd put my trust into random, random strangers 13,000 miles away, and I'll never regret walking through Sydney Airport by myself. I've lived in a small rural town the past six, seven years of my life, in a country where people are already pretty dis spread out. So the sheer amount of people on Cape confused me. Um, DY is a prime example of this. Apparently, compared to like Barnstable and other schools, DY is small fry. No, no, it isn't. Trust me, for the past five years I've been at a high school of 200 people. My graduating class would be 28 people. I passed more people going from, from my advisory to my math class than I would in a week back home. <laughs> but I don't feel like I was spooked very long. The first DY student I met was Alexa Boltz. Thank you so much. Uh, For the first week I arrived, jet laggy as I was, I was staying with Dyer's Rotary Counselor. And the Monday morning I woke up and there was two strange girls sitting in the kitchen. And that was Alexa and Dyer. And thank you, Alexa, for getting beaten like me in Monopoly by Dyer. If you've ever played a German in Monopoly, please don't. Please don't. They win. No words can describe how excited I was my first day. The, just seeing the yellow school bus come round the corner, it's the most American thing I'd ever thought of. <laughs> the, the best thing about my first day at DY, I'd broken my glasses two days before. So the glasses I was wearing were a prescription from three to four years ago. So not only was I lost and alone, I was completely blind as well. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. So, my first day was great. Um, I didn't have an ambassador, so that was interesting. I kind of made my own way to my homeroom and got my timetable. But every person was willing to help me get from class to class, and that's a testament to DY spirit. Then came, like, the only moment so far which has genuinely scared me about student exchange. I'd finished gym and I just walked into the cafeteria for the first time. It sounds stupid, but the cafeteria is easily the scariest thing I've ever gone through my entire life. <laughs> uh, going through airport security in Texas by myself, I would have done that ten times over if I didn't have to walk into the cafeteria by myself. <laughs> and because of this, I'm going to have to be forever grateful to Ed Leach. Because he'd known, me, he'd known me for an hour and a half in my gym class and asked if I, could come, if I wanted to go sit with him at the lunch table. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Apparently we're starting a band with Sawyer Jones called You, Me and the Aussie because we said it one day and it sounded like a good band name. <sighs> to the other seniors that sit at that table, we really miss you. Like, there's three of us in a, three of us in a good day and we can really feel your loss. And I, I don't know how to start it. Julie, thank you so much. Thank you for being like the best friend I've had so far. 
we talked like three or four times at the lunch table and you're just like, do you want to go to the mall? And I said, heck yeah. <laughs> heck yeah. Uh, thank you for taking me to Outback at every opportunity you could. <laughs> thank you so much for that. It, it really brought back th feelings of home, going to the Outback Steakhouse. Seeing as I promised him a sh shout out, shout out to Justin Haley. Is he here? Yeah! Thank you, Justin, for teaching the entire tennis team the true meaning of DY tennis. When in doubt, call it out. <laughs> <laughs> to Jamie Ellis, Shiv Kumar, and Ed yet again. And my boy Cheddar, wherever Cheddar is. <laughs> Thank you for being like the best worst tennis team ever. We got beaten every single time, but we had the best fun. <laughs> to all the seniors in my psych class, thank you for leaving us. There's now three of us. We're having lots of fun. <laughs> but uh, to the seniors I haven't thanked yet, like Timmy or anyone, just because Timmy's right there, I, you all, you all des deserve hours and hours of praise. Christian, I love you, man. But to every senior in the school, because of you and the example you have set in your past four years at DY, you created an environment that accepted me. The entire, the entire school looks to you. Each of you are leaders, and we all follow your examples. The bittersweet moment I realized when I wrote all of this, I'll never sit in your seats. I'll never walk through these doors with my junior year, because I go home in January. I'll miss this and I miss DY, but really it's because of what you created. I'm gonna follow in your footsteps till, footsteps till January 10th when I go home, but thank you. Thank you all so much. And last, but certainly not least, a member of our class of 2013, Christian. Hello, everyone. I am Christian Tapia. I am a exchange student from Ecuador. Uh, my year in America. When I first decided to come to America, I want to learn the language and also learn about the culture. I thought that learning the language will give me more opportunities in the future and it will be, uh, it will be a challenge. By coming to America, I was going to immerse myself in a learn and learn as much as possible I could. However, by coming to America, I was going to have to leave my family, my friends, my school, my culture, everything I've ever known behind and enter, and enter into a very strange land. Despite being scared about leaving my homeland, I knew that in the end, the experience will be something that I will remember and cherish for the rest of my life. On my first day of school, it was scary. Everything was different. And when I started on my day, uh, a lot of people want to, to meet with me. My first, my first class that, uh, that I had, I thought, what am I doing here? I don't understand nothing. And all the people is looking at me like a weird people. I didn't talk to nobody the first day. It was so long for me. The hardest part of meeting friends is when you don't know the language and you feel weird and different from all the students. One of my experience here is, with, is my first time that I was in the hall. The change of the period was so scary because when so many people moved, walking in different ways and talking, it was interesting for me. In Ecuador, the teachers moved into the class instead of the students moving. The periods of, uh, are shorter at 45 minutes and each class were like 50 or 60 per class. Another thing is that the students have everything here, materials, books, materials, but in Ecuador, you, each, each student is responsible to bring all the materials for each class. If you don't have it, the teachers just let you go because you don't have the materials for work. I remember during the lunch time seeing a lot of people sitting at the tables and I didn't know where I have to sit. And I remember when Brittany invited me to, to, the, to the table, it was nice for her. Uh, the entire day was so interesting because most of the people wanted to talk with me, but the biggest problem was the language. Uh, on my first day, I met a lot of people. I would especially thank, uh, say thank you to Alexa. 
we, she was a great person from the beginning of the year. Thanks to a lot of people like uh, Alison Colette, like uh, Janaina De Souza, uh, Liz Egan, Alison O'Connor, Daya, all the Shane students. We are a very nice group. Uh, Megan, Megan Caron, Lexi, everyone was great for me. Thank you so much. The guys from ELL class, they support me a lot, and I didn't understand anything. But the people who know Spanish, they help me and give me an advice. The change, the change from the beginning of the year and now is different, because the first month, the people won't want to talk with you, and they are exclude you. But it, ha it is hard to be an uh, a new student. In Ecuador, all the people are friendly, and they try to introduce the new people. Here, it took a, time, uh, a long time, but eventually, I made friends. Now that I have to leave soon, I will miss all my friends that I made in my 10 months here and my teachers. I hope we keep in contact and I'll never lose this great relationship. I really appreciate it to everyone. Thank you. I want to say thank you for the teachers for being like, uh, helpful and supporting me because like, I, they, understand, they understand my situation. So they show more panties to me. I want to say thank you to Mr. Crosetti. He's right there. Thank you for the new panties. Thank you for Mr. Depuy, I saw right there, Mr. Depuy, thank you. You are the nicest person that I know here. <laughs> ah, especially, I want to say thank you for Ms. La Señora Asperson Golden, for all, this, all your help through the good and the bad times. Uh, she's very nice, she's the nicest teacher here because it's, one of the easy, it's not easy to teach another language. I really appreciate your job and I see the students in Spanish and they really appreciate, uh, surprised that the results is very good. I really appreciate all the teachers and the white and everything that you have done for me. Thank you. In conclusion, my experience in America and at the white has been awesome. It was my dream when I was 15 to come to America. And now I have done. I'm very proud for myself. Thank you to everyone to their support. Thank you for the community for accepting me. And thank you for the experience. I really appreciate everything. Thank you, DY, for welcoming and giving a great experience. I will never forget this awesome year. Thank you. Thank you all. I think we can all agree you guys are such an inspiration. I'd like to introduce say, singing It's So Hard to Say Goodbye, written by Boys to Men, performed by your own Guy Sherifant. <laughs> I'll take with me the man 
I'll take with me those memories to be my sunshine after the rain. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I sat amongst this class in the stands and watched the class of 2010 march into the rhythm of pomp and circumstance. The first thing I noticed as they walked in were the gold tassels around a few of the students' necks. Personally, I didn't know if green and gold was a very good color scheme together, but I did know one thing. Those tassels sure did make the cap and gown look a little more official. I had no idea how certain people had gotten those tassels and wondered that if four years from now, I would be able to get one as well. I had no idea that I would be DY's president of the National Honor Society and I would have the honor of handing them out at the 2013 Senior Last Assembly. <laughs> After two years as a member of NHS, I've come to learn the gold tassels represent a lot more than just an official looking cap and gown. They represent the blood drives that we put on to help hundreds of people on Cape. They represent our advice and our welcomes to this year's eighth grade class and they represent our 30 seconds of fame on Channel 5, thanks to our stars, Tim Foley and Court Mays. <laughs> Four years later, I now understand that the tassels represent the hard work and compassion that each member of NHS has given back to our community. So I urge you, underclassmen, to keep up the hard work in school, on the fields, and in our community, because the future of National Honor Society is now in your hands. And when you receive an invitation to join NHS early in your junior year, I strongly recommend that you apply. Do it to be a member of an organization that truly does have an impact in our school and on our community. And do it because your cap and gown will look a little more official for graduation. I want to give a special thanks to Ms. Hudson for all the work she has done to keep this group together. And a special thanks to the graduating members of the DY's National Honor Society. As each member receives their tassel here today, I hope everyone can recognize that it is an accomplishment of being a hardworking and compassionate individual. So we're going to go through the list of names and each one, whoever, whatever side you're on, you can come up. Joe, our Vice President, will hand you over here and Ms. Hudson will hand them on the left side. So um, you can also hold your applause till the end. Kylie Bowen, Olivia Bowie, Christina Brown, Shannon Campbell, Allison Collette, Sarah Crosby, Dakota Dickerson, Lee Drown, Elizabeth Egan, Jamie Ellis, Kaylee Ellis, Rebecca Feeney, Timothy Foley, Nicole Fontaine, Justin Haley, Emma Harney, Eric Jornet, Peter Julian, Sakina Latola, Michelle Lee, Nicholas Lieberman, Jessica Linnell, Christopher Long, Kevin Lundquist, Michael Lynch, Jillian McDonald, Court Mays, Morgan Meradian, Alyssa Medeiros, Ashley Meehan, Colleen Morlock, Elizabeth Murphy, Julia Pecoraro, Sarah Peden, Alyssa Preston, Nathan Raymond, Esther Ray, Zachary Robbins, Krista Roderick, Jamie Rose, 
Chad Simmons, Ariana Starling, Jocelyn Sullivan, Rebecca Tierney, Cameron Turner, Patricia Vecatini, and for our class officers um, for NHS, Mike McDonald with Public, Public Relations, Jordan O'Day with Secretary, Michelle Whipple, Treasurer, and Joseph Coughlin, Vice President. And last but not least, Mary Gavoni, President. Class of 2013, congratulations and good luck with your future. It is my pleasure to introduce our president, Mr. Jenks. Mary, I appreciate the promotion. <laughs> Nicely done. Again, I love this day because this is the day that we just keep constantly talking about we are a great school. And I think sometimes there's a familiarity with things. And people, we're too hard on ourselves sometimes. We say, oh, here's the four things I gotta get better at. And we don't take enough time occasionally to go, what an outstanding school we have. You know, this class, 2013. It's an incredible group. You're a likable group. But just the stories this morning, you know, caring, compassion. Academic success, of course, athletic success. Kids have their artwork at the US Representative's Office. The band, color guard, percussion, they crush the competition. But you take care of each other, and you do good things. Total stranger comes into the school, and you make them feel welcome. Those things are important. We have a great committed teaching staff here, faculty, staff, support personnel. Our students, you make us proud. It's not a surprise that US News and World Report recognized Dennis Yarmouth High School as one of the best high schools in America. The credit goes to all of you. We have some folks who have dedicated their life to education today, and many of us myself included, we went into education for all kinds of reasons. But at the end of the day, especially as you get toward that retirement, you go, did it matter? Was it meaningful? You look back at 25 or 35 years of teaching, working with what young people, and you can't be an educator and not ask yourself that question. And I think the answer is obvious for our folks that are retiring today. Look at our senior class. Look at this school. We're a better place, and those educators have made a difference to our students. On behalf of everyone, our school, our students, our community, I'd like our folks to stand up and get some recognition. Our school psychologist, Ms. Leslie Carson, Teacher and team chair, Ms. Joy Egan. English teacher, Ms. Adele Hooper. And last but not least, Mr. Joel Roselle, math teacher. Thank all of you for making a difference. Academics. You know, schools exist in the end for academics. 
Every year I say a similar thing because it's true. The formula for success, simple, hard work, all the time, every time. The hard part's actually putting that formula into practice. Today we recognize the top students, the students who seemingly at every occasion and every turn did their best on everything all the time and then did more. This is an incredible senior class. For the first time in the history of Dennis Yarmouth High School, six seniors have a grade point average higher than 4.0. That's incredible. You may ask, how can you get higher than a 4.0, the perfect high school score? That's because so many students here are taking advanced placement courses and earning college credit that you can actually go beyond the perfect high school score and get those college level GPAs. It's unheard of for a high school our size to have so many students with that kind of grade point average. It's also makes it tough when you're calculating the final grade point averages because things get so incredibly close. Normally, we announce the number two and then the number one student at DY. As the final calculations were done this year, the difference between the number two student and the number three student was three one thousandths of one percentage point. That's .003 difference. In any other realm, that would be less than a blink of an eye. So it's incredible. So I would like to recognize our number three student this year, Rebecca Feeney. Rebecca, congratulations. Salutatorian, the number two student in the class of 2013, earned a grade point average of 4.2344. Congratulations, Peter Julian. perhaps no mystery left, the valedictorian for the class of 2013. An incredible grade point average, 4.2712. Congratulations, Ryan Baby. <laughs> It's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Grenier, our AD. Mr. Grenier. Good morning. As Mr. Jenks just pointed out, the meat and potatoes of what we do is academics. That's what schools are for. That's what we need to do is give you the best education we can. Luckily, on top of that, we have to have something to round you out. And I get to do that. I get to do the dessert on top of that meat and potatoes. I get to do the academics part. That's right. When we have academics, we have some students who are exceptional at doing that. It's great when people look around and say, oh, she's the best or he's the best. They really did a good job. But you're not sure because it's local. And everybody thinks that when you're in the local area that you're the best one. You don't know how well they do above that. When you're recognized by other coaches, 
and your peers, and you're put higher than that. Where people vote outside your school, you know that you really have done a great job, and it's recognized. To recognize two people who have done exceptional jobs, we have what are called all scholastics. This year, our two, our two exceptional students who have reached that all scholastic, from the Boston Globe, our All Scholastic Award goes to Jordan O'Day for cross country. And our second All Scholastic goes to Elizabeth Egan for field hockey. And to introduce the Educator of the Year, Ms. McCauley. I would just like everyone to know that I am uh, delivering my speech via my um, district issued iPad and I would like that to go into my evaluation binder. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2013. If we could just take a moment to think back to June of 2012. You were juniors, you were sitting up there, and I was just crowned educator of the year. That was a great day. <laughs> but today is better. One of the reasons this moment is better is because you were a wonderful senior class and you deserve this and all the good things that are awaiting you out there in the real world. You are an amazing group of people and I am so proud of all of you. We all are. Your class is full of brilliance, curiosity, and humor, and it was a pleasure and an honor teaching you. I was impressed with those of you I had freshman year, and I missed you when I was out on maternity leave sophomore year, and you've made me laugh until I've cried in those other years in between. And this year, you've pushed me even further to want to teach you everything that I know. You are responsible for the best classes I've ever had in my teaching career, and I thank you for that. To send you off in style, I would like to say a quote from Newark Mayor Cory Booker that I think will serve you well. Give more than is expected, love more than seems wise, serve more than seems necessary, and help more than is asked. Now, the other reason I'm speaking today, and the other reason that today is better than last year, is because I have the pleasure to announce the 2013-2014 Educator of the Year. Reading all the nominations was one of the highlights of the year. There were so many people nominated this year, and it's a testament to how fabulous our staff is. This is an honor given out by other educators in the building to the person who embodies the best in all of us. Many staff members nominated this person because, and now these are gonna be some direct quotes, he is confident yet humble, always well-dressed, calm, cool, and collected. He's the man, a wonderful person, and also because he simply does so much for our school. He has a wonderful connection with his students and that seems to be first and foremost in everyone's minds when speaking of this person. He is here around the clock and I can tell you from experience that he is always willing to help. I want to sing all of his praises and achievements, but I don't want to ruin the delicious surprise. I know, the anticipation is killing you. <laughs> this teacher goes above and beyond for our district and our community, but more importantly, he goes above and beyond for his students. His high expectations lead to authentic achievement. He creates success in his programs, and he's got the data to back it up. But more importantly, he creates a sense of belonging for his students and that can't be quantified, but you can hear it in every note they play. That is why, that is why Alex Pendleton is this year's Educator of the Year! Thank you so much. This means more than you can possibly imagine. Uh, coming from the faculty, thank you so much for recognizing this. This is, I, I just can't believe this. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, what an honor to be up here, up here this afternoon, this morning. 
Uh, and what a year it's been for me, what a year it's been for my students. We've won two Massachusetts State Championships, two New England State Championships. We had three of you seniors got to lay the wreath of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The jazz band's playing the National Anthem at a Red Sox game in a couple weeks. It's just an absolute, been an, an amazing year and, and wonderful that I can share it with this senior class. I love my job. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. I can't believe they pay me to do this. And I can't believe I just said this in front of the superintendent. <laughs> Seriously though, it, this, this job is who I am. I could not imagine doing anything else. And if I can give one piece of advice to you seniors and to everyone in this room, if you want to be happy in life, if you want to be successful, be happy in life, do what you love. Don't do necessarily what's going to make you the most money. I could probably make a lot more money doing real estate or other things, but I love this job. It's who I am. It makes me happy. And to get this award today, is, is unbelievable. I'm humbled. Thank you so very much. Good morning. Today we are gathered here to honor the class of 2013. Although this is an annual tradition in our school to celebrate the seniors who have worked arduously to finally make it to graduation, this class is not your ordinary group of seniors. This grade is composed of so many exceptional athletes, talented musicians, gifted artists, academic scholars, and most importantly, these seniors are genuinely great people that have raised the bar for all of us here at DY. This class started off their freshman year by being the first incoming grade to experience a block scheduling. Already, they were treading into new territory at our school. For all of us that know the seniors, that should not be surprising, because this is the kind of class that is willing to not only embrace challenges, but they often excel with the challenges given to them. This class is truly unprecedented. Three students accepted into Boston College, one student accepted into Boston University, one senior accepted into Northeastern University, an undefeated marching band season, the first ever New England championship for winter percussion, so many outstanding seasons in all of our sports, and six students with a GPA of 4.0 or more. You are all certainly leaving your mark here at DY. All of the other underclassmen, including myself, have looked up to you as seniors, as our role models, our mentors, our classmates, and of course, we have looked up to you as our friends. You are a class that will be talked about for many years. In the future, when we succeed at DY with our sports, our music, and our academic excellence, we will compare ourselves to all of you. You have raised the bar for all of us and for future classes to come. I say all of this with great sincerity. Class of 2013, on behalf of Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School, I congratulate you with all of your exceptional time here. And I wish you the best of luck with your future endeavors and achievements. Thank you. Dan can't tell you himself because he's a little too modest, but before our musical selection, Dan, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts every year, they pick one student from one school to sit with the Massachusetts Board of Education to represent student interests. Dan Brogan is that representative. <laughs> and now, Another musical selection, Fix You, by Mary and Angelina.
try your best but you don't succeed when you get what you want but not what you need when you feel so tired but you Streaming down your face when you lose something you can't replace when you love someone but it goes to waste. Could it be President 
of the senior class, the class of 2013, the class that's done so much to make us a better school, Emma Harney. Class of 2013 marks the last full day of our senior year of high school. <laughs> Today, we walk through the busboard doors for what is probably the millionth time, or it sure seems like it. I want everyone to take a second to think about their first day of high school. Think about the first time you walked through the doors of the home of the dolphins. I can remember myself standing outside the front doors, looking up at the giant lettering that read Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School and thinking there was absolutely no way I was going to survive that day, let alone the next four years. I'm pretty sure the map I clung to like life support was upside down, and I'm also pretty sure that I was looking for my geometry class in the 500 wing, but what I'm absolutely sure of is that this moment was the furthest thing from my mind. Today, class of 2013, is also the last day we will walk out those same doors together. What I think is so important about high school has virtually nothing to do with the classes we took, the standardized tests we suffered through, or the friend groups we had. Instead, I believe that the value in high school is the fact that we can look back on our first memory and compare it to the last, knowing that we improved as students, citizens, and human beings. We walk out those doors today better people than how we came in. What is exceptionally moving about that thought is that we currently sit surrounded by the people that helped us improve ourselves. We sit encircled by teachers, administrators, friends, mentors, mentees, and most importantly, one another as classmates. We didn't get to this point alone. We will turn our tassels tomorrow together as we embark on the great unknowns of our future, just as we got lost together on our very first day. We have won together, lost together, laughed together, and maybe even as we near the end, cried together. When you look at the seats surrounding you, you are looking at the people who have helped you to define who you are. I bet you can see your very best friend, someone you may not have always gotten along with, someone who you think is hilarious, someone who came to your rescue when you needed it most, maybe even someone who didn't. Every single one of these people made you who you are today. What I believe is so special about this point in our lives is being able to appreciate that fact and being able to thank one another for it. <laughs> Today, we are able to embrace one another as classmates, regardless to what challenges we may have had between us. Each one of those challenges got you to this point. And as we near the top of the mountain, we can look back at the climb, thinking it much easier than it really was. This is a blessing, because in reality, it was not always easy. Most of the time, it was actually quite difficult. In the moments that were the most difficult, we took comfort in the fact that, the, that we were not alone, that there were 197 of us in the exact same position. And this is what is so exceptional about high school. I want to take a moment to personally thank you. I can honestly say that I am so proud of each and every one of you for what you have accomplished and what you will accomplish. I want to thank you for making me proud to be a member of the class of 2013 every single day. And I am so incredibly fortunate to be able to look fondly at my high school years. And this is simply because of the caliber of people that I was surrounded by. I want to thank you for being a friendly smile and a wave when each of us needed it most. And I also want to sincerely thank you for trusting me to take on the job of being class president for the past four years. I've been honored to have this responsibility every day. And I only hope that I, what I have attempted to do can match the standards of this outstanding class. I've dedicated myself to our success, but this does not make me any worthy of special recognition because I've watched every single one of you do it every day. And I am here to thank you for devoting yourselves to being honest, hardworking, and proud members of the class of 2013 when no one was watching and when it counted most. It is very difficult for me to say goodbye because so much of who we are is rooted in being part of this class. Tomorrow, however, is not just goodbye. <laughs> Whatever you do in your future, promise that you will do what you are passionate about. The world already has too many people that clock in and clock out. We are the generation responsible for changing that. My favorite quote is, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, is the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. 
Today, hold open the door for each other, as past classes have done for ours, and as I know we will for classes to come. Tomorrow, after we all cross the stage, turn our tassels, and toss our caps, congratulate every graduate you see. Embrace, shake hands, high five. The reality about tomorrow is that for many of us, we may never see one another again. We have shared so much within this building that it is only fitting we say goodbye to every one of our fellow classmates. Tomorrow may not be goodbye forever. I very much hope it is not. It is, however, a chance to remind us all one last time how much we truly care for one another, to give congratulations, and to wish one another good luck in everything we do. Tomorrow is not just goodbye. Tomorrow is also good luck. You're an incredible class. You've heard us all say that. It's true. You know, we know you need to go forth and do good things, but you're a class that will be missed. In about 26 hours, you'll no longer be seniors. You'll be graduates. So today, some of you will go to the banquet tonight. We'll be here tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And think dry thoughts. Mr. Pendleton. <laughs> Marshals. Thank you, Mr. Pendleton, and congratulations. DY, as always, a wonderful audience. <laughs>